Welcome to History at the OK Corral. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this episode with a fellow history lover. And now, on to tonight's episode. Southwestern Texas, Autumn, 1838. On the banks of the Pecos River, a hunting party of Delaware native tribesmen and a lone Texas ranger relax in their camp, taking in the scenery and fine weather. The Texas Rangers as an organization and the Delaware have built up a close relationship over the preceding years, having the mutual interest of stemming the tide of violence being wrought over the whole of the Texas frontier by the fearsome and formidable Lords of the Southern Plains, the Comanche. The Delaware warriors are members of a long-displaced Algonquin descendant people who had once inhabited the lands ranging from southern New York to the present-day state of Delaware. Though they refer to themselves as the Line Lape or, or common people, they have come to be known as Delaware, as their first encounter with European settlers came on the banks of a bay named in honor of Lord de la War, governor of the English settlement at Jamestown in the year 1610. In the succeeding centuries, the Delaware have been driven southwest, first to the Ohio River Valley, with some moving to Missouri in the late 18th century. Members of this tribe eventually made their way south to Texas, where they had assimilated into many East Texas locales with the local Caddo tribe. They existed peaceably with Mexican officials and citizens, as well as their Texas successors. Their shared interest in combating the Comanche threat had garnered them several close friendships with the rangers and among the surveyor parties who existed under the perpetual threat of a torturous, violent end at the hands of the Comanche. The ranger here in camp today, accompanying this party of 18 Delaware warriors, is 21-year-old John Coffey Hayes, better known as Jack Hayes. Having moved to Texas only the year prior, Hayes has already cultivated a reputation as a steadfast gentleman and a hellacious combatant. Hayes hails from the woods of Tennessee, the product of a military family. His father had served under Andrew Jackson in the War of 1812, and he had been named after Jackson's famous Brigadier General, John Coffey. When he arrived in Texas in 1837, he carried with him letters of recommendation from family who had close ties to then-President of Texas, Sam Houston. Though his arrival saw him miss out on the preeminent events of the Texas Revolution, young Jack Hayes has spent the previous year inexorably ensconced in combating the true biggest threat on the Texas frontier, the Comanche. The Comanche, a Shoshone offshoot who wandered down to Texas from the northern Rockies, had acquired horses from the Spanish in the 1600s and quickly became masters of the new animal and its potential. Though they had started out as a perpetually beleaguered people, subject to the violence and oppression of rival tribes, the introduction of the horse saw the Comanche rapidly ascend to primacy on the vast expanses of the southern plains. Their unique brand of whirlwind violence was not wrought upon Europeans alone, as tribes like the Apache, the Lipan Apache, the Wacos, and the Tarankawas suffered losses just as prevalent and as gruesome as their Spanish, American, French, and Mexican counterparts. This shared suffering led to alliances on the Texas frontier that many contemporary observers would view as unlikely. Such is the case with the young ranger in camp today on the Pecos River. His counterparts in the Delaware warriors accompanying him are not only allies, but close and trusted friends. Though large parts of their time are spent patrolling the areas west of San Antonio and Austin in search of raiding parties of Comanche, they have made this trip to the Pecos River, far west of the only notable settlements, purely in the interest of recreation. Their hope is to procure some of the bountiful game of the area, from bison to white-tailed deer, bear, bobcats, jaguars, and antelope. Hayes and his comrades have so far spent this day lounging about camp taking their rest from the long journey they had made from San Antonio. A journey they had made on foot, in hopes of keeping a lower profile and not traveling with a large horse herd that might prove more enticing to the Comanche than a small hunting party. The men congregate about the camp, checking their gear, trading jokes, or, in some cases, napping in the shade. The only ones among this party who seem eager to explore their new surroundings are two of the younger Delaware Braves, who make their way down river in hopes of taking stock of the local game and topography. Thus far, the day has been a welcome reprieve from the often unyielding stress of life on the Texas frontier, deep in the heart of what was known to the Spanish as Comancheria. Suddenly, though, this placid riverside campsite scene is shattered as the cries of one of the young Delaware warriors is suddenly heard above the sounds of quiet conversations and trickling water. The young man sprints into camp 
covered in blood, breathlessly explaining how he and his Delaware comrade had been surprised by the Comanche. His friend is dead, he says, and he is lucky to have escaped with his life. He informs the men in the camp that the Comanche raiding party is now headed south, likely towards Chihuahua, Mexico. A vote is taken up amongst the Delaware, and it is unanimously decided that the hunt will be abandoned and that the Comanche will instead be pursued. Jack Hayes has little choice. He indeed sees the value in seeking retribution, but his only option should he choose not to travel south with the Delaware will be to make his way back to San Antonio on foot, alone. In the end, there is little choice to be made. Hayes joins the Delaware as they begin a dogged, sure-footed trot southwards through the sparse, rocky landscape in pursuit of the Comanche. The Delaware, with Hayes in tow, keep up a slow but incessant jog that sees Hayes tire after the first few hours. But the party carries on, without stopping for food or water, until well into the night. Though he possesses formidable endurance, Hayes is unused to this pace and duration of travel on foot. Soon, it is all he can do to match the footsteps of the Delaware warrior ahead of him as they plod southward. They stop only for minutes at a time, taking small bites of dried meat and resting briefly, before continuing on again. This withering pattern continues until noon the next day, when the party finally comes to rest at a freshwater spring. Here, they are able to finally drink their fill, and many of them lay down in the cool shade to sleep. Among these is Hayes, who drops off into a deep sleep, thoroughly exhausted from the already monumental trek. In what seems like a fleeting few seconds, however, Hayes is shaken awake. The sun has gone down, and the party is heading out, hitting the trail again at the same incessant trot. With little choice in the matter, Hayes dutifully falls into line, again forcing himself to match the rhythm of the footsteps of the warrior ahead of him. For yet another night and day, the men travel on with the same routine. After resting on the second day, they again break camp, heading out into the moonlit night, Soon, however, they begin to smell the smoke of the campfires. Before long, the Delaware come to a halt and confer amongst themselves as to the exact plan of attack to be carried out upon the Comanche camp. It is decided that they will sneak into position inside of rifle range and ambush the Comanche at first light. The Delaware, with Hayes following suit, begin to literally inch their way towards the Comanche camp, crawling forward on their bellies in barely perceptible intervals. After what seems to Hayes like yet another eternity, the Delaware warrior next to him touches his shoulder, a silent signal that they need crawl no further. The party now watches and waits until the sun rises. With the first few rays of morning light, the Delaware warriors and their Texas Ranger ally are ready. A signal is given to unleash a simultaneous volley into the Comanche camp, and while this initial volley sees only a few of the Comanche fall, the remainder of the camp is thrown into instant and abject chaos. The Comanche are unsure of exactly who is attacking them and of where the attack is coming from. Before this can be discerned, a second volley falls upon them, with more Comanche now falling to the ground, dead and dying, as their comrades scramble to mount a counterattack. Not wanting to afford their hated enemy the opportunity to mount their horses and escape, the Delaware warriors and Jack Hayes now make a daring, on-foot charge into the center of the Comanche camp wielding pistols, knives, and tomahawks intent on slaughtering the Comanche in retribution for their fallen comrade. The fight that unfolds is brutal, with the Comanche being cut down, scalped, and mutilated wholesale. Though the Comanche do put up a formidable resistance, it is soon clear that their fight is lost. With this realization, many of the warriors now break camp and make a run for the Pecos River. Several are headed off before reaching the water, and several more are clubbed down in the rock-strewn shallows of the river. In his book, Texas Ranger, Jack Hayes in the Frontier Southwest, author James Kimmons Greer sums up the fight thusly. The crunch of the light axe into skulls, or thrust of the long knife into backs of the Comanche warriors brought dying screams and gasps. Some of the swifter braves reached the stream safely. Many of them were shot in the water. Very few escaped. Their need for vengeance now satiated, the party cuts their hunting trip short making their way back north, back to San Antonio. For the Delaware, the coming months and years would see them expelled from Texas. Victims of newly elected Republic of Texas President Mirabeau Lamar's aggressive and indiscriminate policy 
of removing all native tribes from Texas lands. This would culminate in what would come to be known as the Cherokee Wars, in which numerous tribes would combat and ultimately fall to Lamar's radical policies. This would see them moved north into what was known as the Indian Territories, an area comprising the modern-day state of Oklahoma. They would again venture southward with the re-election of Sam Houston in 1841, as Houston had always made it a point to maintain his position as an ardent ally of the tribe. Many Delaware would serve in invaluable capacities as scouts for the Texas Rangers, as well as the U.S. Army, in conflicts ranging throughout Texas in the 19th century. Eventually, however, they would be permanently relegated to reservation lands in Oklahoma, where their official offices still reside today. For his part, Hayes would also go on to see far more action in fights against the Comanche, the Mexican Army, local bandits, even eventually going on to move west with the 1849 gold rush, becoming the first sheriff of San Francisco in 1850 and amassing a considerable land and cattle fortune in Northern California. Hayes would pass away in 1883, at the age of 66, in Piedmont, California. He is buried in the Mountain View Cemetery in Oakland, California. This story, despite its scope and brutality, is but one of the countless accounts of bravery, vengeance, and violence on the Texas frontier in the 1800s that are too numerous to cover here in one episode. The many tales of the Comanche, the Delaware, the Texas Rangers, and the legendary Jack Hayes are, for tonight, other stories for other times. Thank you for joining us on this episode of History at the OK Corral. Be sure to click the like button, share this episode with a friend, and become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to support our work and gain early access to episodes, as well as ad-free viewing, you can become a member of this channel by clicking on the join button or click the link in the description below to become a member on Patreon. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time on History at the OK Corral, home of history's greatest shootouts and showdowns.